You know, when people talk about living your life to the fullest, YOLO, my guest today is the epitome of you only live once. So go for it. Indulge, he says. I'm sitting here with Joey McIntyre. Wow. Fresh off a solo night at Carnegie Hall in New York City. There's not a lot of venues where people like hold their finger up and go, someday I'm gonna. When did you do that? Um, about a week prior. Tickets yeah. went on sale. Is it, is it available? <laughs> you know, I toyed with the idea or dreamed about the idea almost a decade ago. Then another project came up and it just pulled me away. And I said, you know, and it was sort of theater based. So I said, let me do that. And then, you know, when my 50th birthday was coming around, I said, well, you know, what do you do? You know, we all, I think a lot of us want to do something special. and For 50. For 50. Yeah, that's kind of the benchmark age. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a big one. Uh, I hit 40 and I was just like, I just want to get out of the bed without having my back go, me? We'll edit that out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was kind of it. I mean, I have connections to certain places. I mean, I, I've said before, you know, a stage is a stage is a stage. So, and you know that. Yeah. Um, you know, you could get up anywhere. Yeah. You know, and perform and connect. It's just in our blood. We're wired that way. So there's a respect and a reverence to any stage, really. But as far as the big ones, you know, I, I've been lucky enough to have a relationship with the Apollo Theater 30-something yeah. years ago. Me and the new kids, you know, getting a chance there, making it there, the crowd getting on their feet, you know, the toughest audience in the world, you know, that New York audience up in Harlem, it was fantastic. And we've gone back there and revisited that. And that's special. We've been able to play Madison Square Garden. We played Radio City Music Hall, you know, those iconic stages. There was really only one left yeah. in New York. And, you know, Carnegie, it's the benchmark for legit musicianship. Everyone's they been there. You know, you could say anyone who's anyone, but at the same time, there is a history of pop music there. It's mm. usually orchestral and Mozart cover bands. And, yeah, yeah, Mozart cover bands. But there's been a lot. Of, I mean, the Beatles, when they played Ed Sullivan, that famous performance, they went across the street and played Carnegie Hall. So the Beatles were there. And of course, everyone remembers Judy Garland and, the, and on and on and on. Well, that's what I want to ask. First yeah. of all, it's the only venue, I think, safe to say, that has like a slogan attached to it where it's yeah. like, how do you get there? Yeah. How do you, when someone says like, how do you get to Red Rocks? They yeah. go, well, you fly to Denver. <laughs> right. You probably want to get off on the 10. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> Carnegie Hall, their slogan is, how do you get there? Practice, practice, practice. I feel like I heard that as a kid. And no joke, I think it was on Sesame Street. I think Big Bird wanted to play Carnegie Hall. Really? Don't quote me on that. You know what? Fuck it. Quote me on that. But I remember Big Bird or some Sesame Street staple was like, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And like, yeah. practice, practice, and whatever. And I remember yeah. hearing that. And I was like, yeah. not that that's where I began my, my journey into you know developing a strong work ethic. So we're sitting here discussing yeah. today your journey to Carnegie Hall and why I thought it was imperative to talk about it this uh, closely after the event is because we started talking the night after. And I think every performer can attest to this. You just kind of on to the next one, even with something as magnificent as this night, it's there for everybody. People share photos and pictures, but a right. true breakdown yeah. about from top to bottom. I don't think anybody does unless it's maybe a walk and talk with uh, Barbara Walters, RIP. So, yeah, so sure, this sure. felt and like the move. It is. And I think you're, you're a fantastic person to do it because you're performing yourself, but you're a great enthusiast for other people and other performers. Well, it, you make it easy. And also this type of an event, I told you I was going out anyway. Yeah. And then you asked me to do 10 minutes up top and I was like, 
fucking took you long enough to ask. But uh, <laughs> no, no, then I was, <laughs> I was like a thousand percent because now I get a reason to be, honestly, I was like uh, nervous, but now yeah. I get to be backstage to see yeah. the moments prior. <laughs> Like half notes. Yeah, yeah. Right? right. Okay. Give us an extra bone just to have time to get around. Yeah. Exactly. Give us an extra button. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The longer you can get. <laughs> so I guess I want to start with uh, how long rehearsing for the show? Um, It was a process. I mean, I have three kids yes. and uh, with big lives and an amazing wife, Barrett. It starts with her because I left January 14th was, was the show. So about two weeks out before the show, I went back East by myself. I rested, I slept in, I rested my voice first. Then I built it back up. I had a couple of gigs back in LA to warm up and work out ideas, but- You just need to be you know, free of distractions, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's, and that's where the indulgence- started for me. Um, you know, I think as artists, sometimes we think, ah, I don't need that kind of, you know, self-care or yeah. I don't need to train or I don't. But if you look at it, like you want to be at the top of your game and you see what athletes do, for instance, you know what I mean? There's a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah. And for us to be on stage and feel great, that involves rest, that involves eating right and taking care of yourself. And so I was able to do that and I knew who I wanted to put the band together. And that that was, you know, the MD was Nadia Dijala. It's so hard to say. <laughs> Dij, Dijalo Nardo. I'm not the first to mess that up. <laughs> we all know Nadia. Yes. And Rich Mercurio on the drums. The two of them, like, work together to make the charts and, and just air it out. Yeah, full band. Full band. You know, I wanted a mixture of... The stuff I've done on Broadway, off Broadway, you know, some new kids stuff, my original solo stuff, some standards. So it really was like a mixtape. You just hit 50. You're yep. like a nice variety pack of Pretty my much. work up yeah. to this point. Yes. Which yeah. means at 100, you're going to have to do it again yeah. with the second half. Yes, exactly. Um, look at that skin. You think he's not making it to triple digits? Yeah, dude. Look at that. You still somehow look way younger than me, and I'm uh, not pumped about it. Because you you just too busy. You know you don't you gotta sleep. I was hoping for some sort of you, you look sleep. great. This yeah. guy just goes, nah, yeah. There are your wife are, looks <laughs> great, and that's all that matters. <laughs> um we've been very blessed. I mean, when I say we, it's hard not to talk about my career first with me and the new kids. You know what I mean? Me and you know, these five the five of us from Boston, you know, just been so lucky to do what we love to do for like amazing fans. Yep. But, you know, they have lives. Our fans have lives and commitments and jobs and families and a lot of bills to pay. So every time you put a show up, you don't know. And 2,800 seats is nothing to sneeze at for one-fifth of us. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. you know, you just tread lightly. You hope for the best, but you plan it out. And, you know, again, you never take it for granted. And, you know, they showed up again. They surprised me again. And In moments, and, by the way. I don't know if you know the exact well, I don't number. know about moments because they crashed the site first. You know what I mean? And, and then. Humble brag. And then, and wow. Then, yeah, it sold out in like a day. So it was uh, it was very, very exciting and very special. And Tell me about that, though. Because nobody in the group has, everyone's kind of done their own thing, yeah. obviously. This was the first time I think somebody was doing a, really big show like this right. separately from the group. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that was coming from just finally being like, dude, I'm better than these guys. I need to show them. But like the- There might've been a time uh, years ago of that. I think we all share- Every group goes of, through that. Yeah, but it's so sweet now because the five of us support each other so much, you know? Yeah, it's and insane. You know, again, we're all lucky enough to be a part of this. We continue to be blessed. So it's not about separating. It's just about of course, sharing. Of course. And, and, um, and they, by the way, they're amazing at that. As I've gotten to get to know all of yeah. them. Yeah. They're so, and we'll talk about this, but yeah. at the end, when you bring yeah. them out, yeah. there's, uh, well, we'll get to it. But it was so sweet. I was sobbing. Like I just saw the new Tom Hanks, a man from auto or a man about auto or something. <laughs> Hanks dot, dot, yeah. dot, yeah. auto. I sobbed yeah. the whole time. I yeah. saw probably harder at the end of your show yeah. because it was so, hey man, friendships come and go. And yeah. people that have truly been in your life from the get go yeah. 
And to still see people look at each other with that same amount of love and camaraderie and just true sibling uh, a flavor to it where you'd die for this person. Yeah. I want to know this. When the tickets go on sale and the site crashes, yeah. it, do you choke up? Are you like, oh, man, does it make more pressure added, more excitement? Of course it's exciting. I mean, I was posting, like, hang in there. I didn't want people to just give up on the site, but they, you know, waiting online for hours, and, and they got through. <laughs> In a lot of ways, it all felt right-sized. You know, that's what experience gives you, right? Is being in the moment and right-sizing it so that you can be the best you can be. So, tickets sell. You're in New York, you're getting rest, you're working out, you're starting to say, what's that balance of because I know that even as I would hit you up and you were just like, I got to rest the pipes, like yeah. be concise with your questions. You know how you ramble, <laughs> you know, fucking get to the point already. No, that is true. I mean, it was it was hard not to like reach out to people or like what a great shut excuse, it down. Though. What a great way to just be like, yeah, it was hey, good. Talk, man, no, I finally, yeah, 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 yeah. Was that tough? Or do you knew well, what you were doing? Well, before? a little bit. I mean, it was such a luxurious, you know, indulgence to really take care of yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and rest and do what you love and have time to work things out and, you know, work out some blocking and some choreo and, yeah. you know, just sing all day and then rest and all that jazz. So, um, yeah, it was it was great. How much of the energy of the city do you feed off of? Of just being around, walking was, the streets, yes. singing it your was, stuff, right? You like, know, a couple of nights, you know, the show was Saturday night. So, you know, Thursday I really tried to just chill. Um trying to find a steam room around new york and yeah found one of course it was at the ritz carlton very fancy whoa had like a secret service person but i mean they do it right that escorted there. you yeah. in yeah that wrapped you the know. towel around yeah. you yeah yeah pretty Don't go much that far yeah the steam and the massage comes with champagne it was a, oh. so i was really but again i was identifying with all these fans like you know spending all this time and money to come in and yeah and i see them it sounds corny but they inspire me to take care of me because wow. that is a real gift to yourself to fly into New York and see a show and get a hotel room and meet up with your buddies and go to dinner. And yeah. And this break for a lot of people, I think your fans span the gamut. I've gotten to know them well through cruises and, and shows and return of the Mac and them coming to my shows. Now, yeah. a lot of them in my age range, maybe a few years older. Yeah. Right. Between what? Yep. Like 30 and 50, maybe right. 30 and 45. 30 a little young. I would say 40. 40. I, I mean, so I, yeah. People that are living. I mean, lives. we got the baby blockheads still a 1, whole other generation, but the heart and soul, you know, are my age I and, mean, and they're, doing they're, things they're, where, yeah, like you said, putting this trip together. Yeah. It could be their one trip for the year. Yeah. Right. And what's great is they're never bummed because they know that you guys keep, as you did with this uh, solo show, put in all the time and effort of work, but make it a full show. This yeah. is the, I think the first thing I said to you after or maybe before, I don't know, I wasn't allowed uh, within 10 <laughs> feet of Joe pre-show, which is weird because I opened the show. But um, <laughs> no, is uh, I said, dude, you're a showman. You're a true in the sense of the word, a showman. The show had every aspect of a true entertainer, which mm -hmm. I knew you had from just getting to know you as a bud, like, and how you hold a room and how you hold an individual's attention, how you are with your kids. It's like, you just have an everyman casual yet. Like I can really blow the roof off this place if I need to mm -hmm. vibe, but seeing it on stage in that Avenue was insane. Like love the moment. Yeah. I love being on stage in the moment. I love 
the unknowing. I love the what's going to happen next. Whoa. Again, I know you can relate to yes. that. I mean, that is a comic. I know you're not just a comic, but like that is what you guys do is like you live off that. You thrive off that. Yeah. You have to love that. And that goes hand in hand with right sizing this beautiful event because but we have to put it behind us at a certain point too. But I live for those moments. Yeah. I felt incredibly present. Sometimes, you know, you're on tour, you're doing 50, 60 dates, and you're like, man, I am not present. I am, whoa, I'm going through you the know, blah, 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 yeah. blah, all that stuff, but you're still showing up. Totally. You know, but for Carnegie, when I look at it, I just feel like I've been building up to that night my whole life. The repertoire, the people I work with, what I want to do, you know, it was 2,800 seats, but it really felt like uh, somebody's living room. Whoa. I just felt very, very much at home. And it made sense because these wonderful people have been with me since I was, you know, since I was 12 almost. When you joined the group. Yeah, I mean, probably 15, but still, I mean, they've been with me for 35 years. I will say this too. You said felt like you were in someone's living room. That starts with you. You have to come out and set that tone yeah. and create that vibe. Yeah. But also the fact that everyone's there for you is really cool and maybe a little different, right? Like yeah. nobody knew you didn't announce any uh, other special Prizes, guests. Yeah. So everyone's coming yeah. there for you. Yeah. They, I'm sure in the back yeah. of their head, your fans are like, the guy's got to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan and Johnny have got to be in the background. Yeah, that's a kid of one of the fans. But or you would. But braces, the thing is, the fine. great thing is, by the reaction of when they came out, it seemed like they weren't planning on it. You know no, what I they, mean? No, so they definitely just, weren't. It was got, as if they didn't have a freaking clue. Totally. Yeah. But order set. Uh, you've got your um, set list. Yeah. Rehearsals have felt good leading up felt to the good. night. Good. Yeah, of. I, I thought it was kind of a, a brilliant idea of mine to you know, set up shop at Mohegan Sun, which is a couple of hours away. You know, Mohegan Sun, the new kids have been there a bunch, mm. you know, and we have a great relationship with them. And, you know, that way you're comfortable and then you do a show there you know, to, to work some stuff out. I mean, you still want to give that audience an amazing yeah. show, but you know, it's really nice to work with people and being so stoked that the people that you want to be doing this with don't want to do it with you. Yeah. I mean, that's the, yeah. you know, the gift is all mine. The morning of you change anything up? Do you brush your teeth from the other sink? Yeah. Are you like are superstitious? I'm not treat too it like superstitious. Any I, other gig? You know, by the last two nights before Carnegie, I'm just jazzed. I'm my head's hitting the pillow, and I'm like, I don't know when I'm gonna fall asleep. Isn't that Pumped crazy up. that that still happens? It's crazy. My mom was saying how she can't fall asleep sometimes when she knows she has to travel, hmm. but she was, you know, coming down to to visit in L.A. and she was. Partly she just puts off packing, but also she goes, I was genuinely like excited, like a little kid and I, I couldn't sleep. And I yeah. go, wow, mom, you're 74. Yeah. And looks like she's 50, Putin's yeah. crushing it. Yeah. She was uh, so like a kid in that moment. And I go, oh man, that's cool that like, that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. But what a cool thing to have to and, just, I don't know, experience. Yeah. No, the adrenaline. I mean, thank God for adrenaline. But it was so cool to hit the pillow and like, you know, I had my own room because the kids, you know, were in their room, my my wife and my kids. But it was so cool to be like, even my dog was there. Your dog fly cool, coach or first? How cool is it? <laughs> coach. coach. <laughs> how cool is it that like, my wife and my kids are in the same hotel right now and I'm talking about indulging, like I'm taking care of myself, I'm sleeping, and never mind the other 2,800 people that came to town, they're not probably sleeping. not going to bed, you know, Hell before no. me. Oh, but, I saw them out the night before. But, but yeah, so it was so many reasons to be jazzed up. But, you know, that day was, you know, we had sound check, we had to deal with, 
you know, Carnegie is a very specific venue. Oh, yeah. They have crazy rules. Oh, I and, sneezed on, like, the wrong staircase. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, a security woman, who I think yeah. was pushing 80, yeah. blocked me over the head with yeah. one of those old school nightsticks. Made me wipe it up. Made me clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> made me clean my own blood yeah. off my own pants. Yeah. Uh, no, and I respect that about it. It's like... But also the time restraint. The time restraint, you know, it's a union house, so there's very specific rules. So, you know, when it's time to go and that door opens and you walk out, like you did, to kick it off, it's magic. Come up, let's circle up. We have so much fun. So let it all hang out. Yeah. 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 Bam. All right. All right. All right. Do it. Do it. But I loved it. I mean, I loved you being there and you walk out. And I'm waiting and I hear you. And that was the first time I got like emotional, you know, because Whoa. like you're my buddy, you know what I mean? And I love what you do. And like, again, you're like one other amazing special person to me that was there. You were hilarious as always. And then I will say their ovation for me sounded a, a little, <laughs> not louder, I wouldn't say. It just was more, it was fuller. <laughs> like then when you came, but that's. <laughs> Could be, yeah. <laughs> no, I, the. Moments even leading up to that, walking on the stage, I don't know if you took a moment to yourself. You know, when that first downbeat came and the, the, the lights come down and I, you know, it started in a chair and it was everything, you know, and I really wanted, you know, the, my opening number was 39 years from the show Tick, Tick, Boom, which is, I did off Broadway many years ago and now it's a movie on Netflix. Stop the number you know you hit the big note at the end it's a it's an a it's a big note it's a full note it's one of the biggest notes no yeah i it's mean a, well an, a, a, an a used to be a big deal for a guy now now it's you know it, it's still a big deal and it's all how you hit it but you know if i made a bet if i said god you know the gods god the universe just give me that note and after that i'm good for the rest of the night That is a big money note, like first song, you know, three minutes in. Yeah. And that note sounded like a freaking freight train, bro. Like that was, and I watched some of the, the YouTube. <laughs> and that first time, it took me a while to watch anything because I didn't want to watch anything. I didn't want, I just waited. You kept going on IG and, and all your yeah. fans were tagging you and stuff. Yeah. And you were like, I haven't looked at anything I yet. Can't. I wanted to stay here, which yeah. by the way, I love that. Yeah. I've definitely had amazing sets, gotten off, yeah. listened to it, and been like, is that even my voice? Yeah. Like, oh, this is so not funny. I, what am I doing? I should, yeah. the memory is better. Sure. At a certain point, you were like, you know, I need to. Yes. Yes. Do special and, and, and the memory is always better. I, I know people that. Johnny Depp doesn't watch any of his movies. Yeah. What am I going to do about it? No, it's yeah. already been made, you know? Exactly. You know, and you look back, and I finally look back, and I was like, oh, baby. Sounded like I felt. Oh, man, it was just like a long pass down there, just like a Tom Brady spiral right down the sidelines in the Super Bowl. All right, we don't need to bring, you know, <laughs> those touch of guys into this, but... Uh, goats, man, you gotta talk about <laughs> he the is, goats. You got to. Goated event. I'll, I'll respect what he's done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Backstage, I saw you before I went out. Yeah. We embraced. Uh, you, uh, you were so calm. And I, there was a lot of people. For those of you that are like, oh, what's backstage at Carnegie... Come with me, I'll tell you. Yeah. There's like 30 people, big crew. The band was the there. The band, yep, and yep. it's of great energy, though. Like headsets galore, people being like this and that. Who are you again? Adam. Nobody told me you were going yeah, on. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, grab yeah, a, where's your, yeah. your mic? Don't use that mic. This one's yeah. going to be on. Am I bringing it out? No, you're going to do this. Uh, his kids are going to intro yeah. you. Yeah. Great. Yeah. They're being real silly with me, which yeah. just made me like even more comfy. They were yeah. pumped. Yeah. I start like just talking to them about how this is, and they were both like, this is so cool. They weren't even nervous to go out. They were just like, yeah, we're about to show the world who our pops is. Yeah. A lot of smiles back there. It was. There. I, I mean, was I, I got to say, I was very calm considering. There was a lot, but I guess, you know, and I have this experience, it's my job to be that calm and cool. That's life and rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, th I think so. I think it's, you know, believing you belong, you know. I like that. Uh, and, of course, it comes with age, too. I mean, we're talking about this is my 50th birthday. So, you know, there's all of that yeah. being receptive to whatever's coming your way mm. and, and using that. 
the first ovation that you did get, which again we can check the tape, but it seemed a little a little soft, is no, it was it was bonkers. Yes, I felt that explosion, that wave of of energy and sound. Is that Carnegie? Yeah. They we, want have to, me back. we have to pay for <laughs> they want you back. No, they're they're calling you to be Sorry. like Sorry. Dude, you said that's our, what I get for not wanting to get a ticket. No, I, I, in the middle of my speech. They said if you talk about us and mention our name more than twelve times, we're uh, gonna find you. We're gonna find you. Yeah. Um all right, so you get that first ovation. First ovation. I knew thirty ninety was was a great opener. And then New York, New York, you think, well, where do you go from there? But it's different. It's like let's go. We're here. <laughs> You know, I was able to do my own take of it. You know, it takes a long time in this business to really sit in it and take it easy mm. and do less. And all the things that the teachers say and the mentors say, it's like, do less, do less. You know, you've done the work. Just, just do your thing. It's up to you. I was really impressed by your in between. I think you did a couple songs and then you kind of broke the fourth wall, right? You know, and then just start talking to the crowd. Yeah. Which was a consistent through line in the show, which again goes back to my showman aspect. You stand up, you sit down. It's okay. I understand. I understand. It's up. You're, now you're the only two people standing. You didn't know it. It's all on you. You have guests coming and going. You got a band. Yeah. But you're never not on stage. And so you have to keep the connection going the yeah. whole time. Yeah. In a uh, three-hour-plus show, right? Is that wh about what we went to? We called it 259 because we had to run off the stage. There it because is. Because the whole building was going to go into overtime. You're pushing yeah. to a level of show where, yeah. man, it better be fucking good yeah. if people are still this long into it. And that's the thing is like, yeah, it's why I enjoy doing crowd work and feel like it's so necessary. You got to break it up because yeah. people need, if it's just ba -dum, ba -dum, and then this and then a straight order, I, I mean, but you I get, guess we take that out. for granted, though, because I, I think some performers just aren't into it or that just doesn't come naturally, and I don't know what it is. But, of course, it, I mean, why not? Yeah. What we worked out is more like, should we see if we, we still got it? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Old school? Oh, with the, the choreography? Absolutely. Let's, let's, oh, let's give it. it a shot. All right. Shot. Okay. My first guest was my sister, Carol who I sang my first song with when I was six years old. Now I see the perfect time to thank me for your career. You might be right, but if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be singing here. Oh! <laughs> she was, you know, bawling that I even asked her. She was so touched. And she's a performer herself still. She's in Boston and she has a, a great following. And Oh, she milked that entrance. She milked it, but she sounded amazing. But she really we did. We sing she the song it. that I, first time I ever, you know, sang was I do anything from Oliver, and it was brilliant. Oh. Yeah. Wow, this floor is good for me. <laughs> My next kiss was Shoshana Bean. Mm -hmm the Tony nominee from, from that year. And she's phenomenal. And she'd sing like anything yeah. and everything. Yep. Um, she comes out and her microphone's not working. <laughs> the first thing where you go, all right, well, there had to be something. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know. Pissed? What's in that moment for you? Well, you don't have time to be pissed, you right? Don't. I mean, what's the point of being pissed? But do you use it? Do you talk about it? Of course. You're not trying to hide it. So we end up singing the first song together on one microphone. It was face to couldn't face. be any hotter. Yeah. The song is called Bad Idea. It's about two people not wanting to have an affair, but they're about to because they can't help it. And here we are singing that song, one microphone. She's amazing. It was everything, and I wouldn't change it for the world. So stuff happens. It's a friendly audience, to, to say the least. It's a friendly audience if you let them know that you're in control. 
right? If you roll with the punches, it, you guys started making jokes about it. Then it became musical chairs with the mics where yeah. somebody would come out with one, tap it, it's working, yeah. hand it to you. It doesn't work. You yeah. hand it to Shoshana, it yeah. works for her. Yeah. She goes, cool, take mine, but she hands you the wrong one. Then you grab hers back. Then you guys do a swap. Then a guy comes back out and goes, I found a new one. You're like, do you even work here? He's like, I just found a mic in the back. You know, and so it was just a real crazy farce it. type comedy of airs. Yeah. And everybody loved it, but they loved it because you immediately just were like, we're going to commit to every moment. Yes. It felt like the Super Bowl. It felt like, I, I imagine that's how it feels when someone is at the top of their game. If you mention Brady. Playing mention, in the Super Bowl. If you mention Bowl, Brady again, you can leave. It just, it just was one of those things. I mean, it was special enough for us to get together like this. Yeah. And just so we can all look back together. Yes. Remember back. how special it was. Looking back. Maybe it should be called looking back. Looking back. <laughs> oh, looking in. Yeah. Yeah, Carol crushed it. Yeah. Very special because yeah. you started to talk about your dad, too. And that yeah. was like a real uh, sweet moment. Yeah. This, uh, sometimes I say if, if I had one song to sing, this would be it. Uh, means a lot to me. Um, makes me think of my dad. And, um, he would have been pumped to see there, yeah. Oh, man. That, God, he that? was our biggest fan. I mean, he was such a big fan that my siblings would be like, oh, God, here he goes again. You know what I mean? He just, from the beginning, from the new kids until, you know, the day he, he passed away. He was 87. He had led a great life. And um, he introduced me to Frank Sinatra. So when, when I sing All the Way, and Debbie Gibson, who's an amazing performer, but what's so cool about that is she just plays the piano on that. Yeah. And I sing. Yeah which is just something so cool about that. Oh, yeah. I love the way she plays it and to share that moment with her. And she just lost her mom, you know, last year. And you mentioned and then my that. Drummer, and yeah. then my drummer, Rich Mercurio, his mom passed away the week before the show. And I made a shout out to his mom yeah. too. And I said, maybe she's the one who's messing around with the microphones. I had to give it some levity because I didn't want him <laughs> bawling his eyes out, him playing Carnegie Hall, you know. Bro, I totally um, forgot that. That was, yeah. and, and that was another, again, for people watching, showman moment, which sounds like, you know, a guy that you went to high school with <laughs> that wore overalls with no shirt and got a lot of, you know, got a lot of girls for some reason, showman moment. And his name was like Adam Larsky, but he was yeah. like showman moment. And he wore like a do-rag, but he was white. We all know that kid. But that was another moment. I think it's your brother-in-law. I think it's Dirt Day. My, my <laughs> white rapper brother-in-law, Dirt Day. Shout yeah. out. We'll put up his Instagram handle. Um, I did think it was really special how you wove, again, you being present. You gave beautiful shout outs to Debbie and Mercurio, which just added to the moment. And then to make a joke that it was uh, his mom messing with everything got such a big pop. Yeah. And I told you again, you're uh, you're swift at this, and I think it's what people love in any good comedy is, you know, to get your heartstrings tugged at just enough and then get hit in the face with some giggles. <laughs> yeah. And it really broke the room and was yeah. really great. When I said it's all showbiz, like one of the things I said that night was, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. And what I added to that is, it's all practice. Yeah. It's all. <laughs> I think you know uh, we're, we're giving you a good show, so I don't want you to ask for your money back. When I say it's all practice, but I'm practicing up here right now, man. And I love that. And golly, am I <laughs> um, in front of a loving, friendly audience. But you've always given me the opportunity to just give it a shot, you know? And, um, Again, these people have known me since I was 15. Yeah. So I knew I could share that way. And I was, you know, along with all the laughs and the great songs and the great music, you know, to just be on the same page with everybody was awesome. After Carol and Shoshana and then Debbie came out and crushed it with you. E-Man came out next, yeah. Yeah.
And this has been a homie of yours for forever. Forever. 20 years. Yeah, yeah. E Man's birthday is August 16th. Donnie's August 17th. Damn. Hard workers. Yeah. Hard headed at times. Sure. Know what they want, know what they bring to the table. You know, so I'm attracted to that in my own way, you know, but we can butt heads. Right. And that's what, you know, I've, it, it took me 30 something years with Donnie to realize that, like, oh, wait a minute. Like, that's what makes the dynamic work, mm. too. That's the creative process. 1, you know what I mean? So I don't want to change all of it, you know, but but give the space and grace when it needs it. Totally. You know, so to have E-Man there, you know, Emmanuel's an amazing musician, oh, great incredible. producers, got a bunch of hits, you know, and, but he loves to perform. Yeah. Like us. You guys together, uh, that was the first like acoustic uh, yeah. portion of the show, which yeah. really filled that room up. That was, and I think you did uh, uh, U2 uh, yeah, one. one. You know, as far as the set list, to me, yes, I did the couple of standards, you know, um, you know, Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra, Smile that, you know, Charlie Chaplin wrote. But the new standards to me, you know, Elton John, Tiny Dancer is a standard. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. George Michael, father figure is a standard. And and so is in U2. I mean, Bono and what those guys do, those songs, we love singing U2 acoustically and, and to do it in that room with our closest friends is was awesome. Yeah, it was a ripper. So at this point of the show, I guess we're maybe looking at like, I don't know, an hour in probably. Yeah, about that. Uh, maybe wh more. Where is your head, I guess? Because the stamina of, the, I kept questioning myself on that because you're moving and shaking. Yeah. Again, dealing with little hiccups. You're truly hosting the party too. It's like yeah. you're running around checking on the uh, pigs in a blanket, but then you're answering the door to be like, yeah. oh, hey, come on in. There's <laughs> drinks over there, but there's a really great conversation happening at the fire pit. <laughs> Sit down, soak it up, come in and your cocktail will be ready. Oh, oh shit, the doorbell God. just rang again. I'm going there. Yeah. You go to the audience. You guys good? Yeah. You know, I'm welcoming in this person, truly. Yeah. But again, it's it starts with saying, honey, I, I got to go two weeks before the show. Yeah. You know, that rest totally. means everything. You had a couple other Broadway stars come out. Uh, Jerry Dixon and yeah. Natasha Diaz, who did Tick, Tick, Boom with me. Right. So they came out and did Louder Than Words. love singing that song and again so many people were like that thing and that thing and that thing and it, people were like oh, the, oh that was it or that could have been the closer or that you know and, and that's the kind of reaction you want yeah this is so cool i'm like it's something so many moments of like, <gasps> I know, I know. <laughs> oh wow. natasha and i did this song therapy which is sort of like a rat -tat, tat really fast moving yeah. you know in the round back and forth song that we hadn't done in 20 years and you know we we killed it i mean it was great um it's a jonathan larson song and very stephen sondheim yeah. influenced you know bap, 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 bap. that was great and then natasha sang a great song called happiness is just a thing called joe and that yep. was my one break the only one yeah what'd you do in that break pull the curtain back uh take a pee quick change yeah just change that's all you got time and for. it was more time than i needed i was like let's go Jerry Dixon's husband, Mario Cantone. Yeah. You just go, yo, at the end of it, you're talking. It you're, was You great. gave everybody their moment pre yeah. and post. Like, yeah. what are we doing? Hey, yeah. it was very like, yeah. again, just very uh, of the sweet. show. Where you're like, yeah. how are you doing? What are we, we know each other since blah, blah, blah. All right, you want to sing a song? All right, let's do it. And then yeah. at the end, you'd reminisce for a minute or somebody would tell a quick story about something that yeah. everyone would say stuff, something about you. Yeah. And you even shout out to Mario Cantone. So house lights come up, he stands up. Another yeah. great moment where everyone's like, oh shit. It was wonderful. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was, it was great. He's been a lifelong friend, so oh, for Mario's real? fantastic. So to have those performers in the house is everything. I had so many people in the audience that really, you know, inspire me. You know what I mean? I had just done a show in L.A., Drag the Musical, which is going to have a, an amazing future. And, and Nick Adams, who's one of the leads, is a beast, dude. He did these songs. He shot out of a cannon all in drag and in heels. When you have that kind of... 
you know, example in front of you, it really feeds you. Yeah. You know, that's what we're here to do. Yeah. It, to inspire each other. You did the acoustic solos. Yeah. You had uh, Debbie come out, Carol. Yeah. Single, a little bit of single, which is a new kid song. Yep. Tiny Dancer, which yep. is a classic. Into Father Figure, which that was a moment where I was like, wow, this feels like a walk in the park. Like, if Father Figure feels like a walk in the park, I can ask for nothing more. How come? Because George Michael is a beast, you know, and it's a song that should feel easy and but strong at the same time. And I just felt like that's not always the case. And and it was. Yeah. And then we had never done Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. That was a that was, that the, was the last minute. Well, we did it at Mohegan, but we had we, Still once. we that was a, a late add to the set list. Yo, can I be honest? That that that's a, a strong case for song of the night. Dude, I know, man. It Whoa, was just a chills. I mean, to sing that song is such a gorgeous song, and the band was like so amazing. holding up lighters i feel like that was a very kumbaya mo i feel like i don't know if there was lighters there might, but it was yeah i think it's illegal I don't but know. There, was, there was a swing or arm or like well that was tiny dancer right yeah hold me closer tiny dance so everyone was singing that because i do that the call back and yeah you gotta yeah. sing that And then, you know, Father Figure and then into uh, Don't Let the Sun, which is How such a good song. come two Elton songs and George Michael, where does their... I grew up on him. I mean, to me, George Michael is the gold standard because he was a consummate performer, sounded amazing, but he wrote the songs and he produced the songs. Like, his songs were, like, all around amazing, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, if you for pop music... It's just gorgeous stuff. And then, you know, you have Elton John, which is like, he's like the godfather of, totally. of, of like pop music, yeah. you know? Uh, we get to a point in the show where now, hey man, people are like, how does this get any better? Yeah. <laughs> We've seen a lot. We've seen it all, I feel like. Yeah. Maybe Adam's coming back out. <laughs> um, doesn't look like it. There's I did a couple of standards. Yeah, I did a couple, a couple of standards. standards. I did love the knacking. L is for the way you look at me. Yes. So that was the song I sang to audition for New Kids on the Block. For real? Yeah. So I told that story. You were probably, I don't know, getting some popcorn or something. But yes, that was. I got to be honest. Yes. Like I said, it was a little long. So yeah. you, you tend to space yeah. out. No. Yeah. Then I sang Smile. Smile, yes. though your heart is aching. That, which is another becoming song of the One night. of my favorite Not songs. Me. Like, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. And then I asked. Donnie to sing a song. Oh, come on, come. You want to look at everyone? Hey, Monkey. Look at the room. Say hi, everyone. This is how she loves to look. <laughs> I think just together, even if it's unison, but if you want to. One more. One, one more for the road. were probably hoping but they almost forgot about anything because the show was going so well anyway yeah so they were ready and then the door opens and he walks out and they should look on the earthquake like richter like if it came up you know how sometimes didn't that happen Bro. in seattle or something like that you can hear oh yeah you know at the seahawk yeah, stadium yeah yes we you broke can, the it, it seismic reads, right yeah yeah i mean when donnie came out it felt like the roof was gonna like rip off. Oh yeah. It was crazy. Even he was surprised. So I love that I surprised Donnie. Like I manufactured <laughs> the biggest reaction to Donnie Wahlberg. Like that's <laughs> yeah. it. Like see you later. If you provide, I think any Wahlberg, you're you get the key to the city. Yeah. To any situation. He is he's beloved. And he, you know, talk about a guy that enters a room. Yeah. I was like, you want to mix it up a little bit? Like, I got this song, I got this idea. You know what I mean? Because that song, one for my baby and another one for the road, 
Yeah, quarter to three, you know, set him up, Joe. I got a little story, you know. It was on the nose, but it's such a classic. Yeah. And it's almost like the two of us together are like Frank Sinatra, you know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah. I'm, I'm singing the standards, but he is that persona. 1,000. That can bring things together, that can, you know, he's a guy that can make a phone call and people will pick it up. Mm. It was very apropos for him to sing a Frank Sinatra song at Carnegie Hall. And he did it because he gets it. You know, he loves going for it. He loves to mix it up. He loves to try new things. And that's why we get along so well creatively. That's when we get along creatively. And so that was a cool, cool, different, special moment. And then, of course, the other guys had to come out. Yeah. Well, then you pause and kind of said, it's too bad the other guys didn't want to Well, they it. missed their cue because those doors are so solid oh, and yeah. no one knows what's going on backstage. I'm like, <laughs> get out here already. Oh, shit. But when they came out again, the place The delay bad. was perfect because it yeah. almost added to the hype and the anticipation. That's exactly. all perfect. Then one of you said, I'm not going to say they're not not here right yeah 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 and yeah. then that just started the yeah, pants yeah, flew off and, yeah. and then the door opens they come out and again it was just like yeah test the quake levels yeah um and then this is the part where i thought was probably not scripted but probably thought about where you know that you're gonna let the guys speak about watching you up here for the show and yeah. and jordan casually brings up how john was sitting because he was a few rows in front of me had better seats because he's in the group <laughs> and so john ran up to the room where the rest of the guys were hanging before they came out and jordan said he was just crying being like he's so good. yeah i know i know yeah, yeah and yeah. everybody laughed because it was so sweet and yeah. funny and then one of them said jordan was even crying or no, you said no. Well, I said I don't want to say anything. You know, I I had a moment too. You know, of course I with had each my guy. Don yeah. yeah, my moment with Donnie, and then you know when the guys came out, I had to share how happy I am for John. He's doing what he loves to do. His hmm. passion is building homes, and his TV show is a big hit, yeah. and that's his Carnegie. You watch his show, and he knows exactly what he's talking about. And I love that. It's inspiring. And, you know, I had a moment with Danny. And the the moment you talk about with Jordan is I said, I don't want to talk about Jordan too much because he'll start crying. <laughs> and when he cries, it's an ugly cry. Yeah. And it's actually, it's no tears. It's all ugly. <laughs> um, and that sure enough. That got such a big yeah, pop. That got yeah. a comedy pop, dude, yeah, because it yeah, was yeah. such a funny. Yeah, yeah. And then you proceed to go into this really sweet, you know, just a brother, he's, he's, yeah. another. Well, and he's how a he Zen out. master. I yeah. mean, he's been such an example for me my whole life on and off stage. He's a great guy and an amazing performer and a perfect guy to look up to and hold you accountable without even doing anything. Just by him being him, you know what I mean? Whoa which is really cool. And that made him cry. That made him, by the way. That made everybody. It was, because again, you started to get choked up because you were saying it. Yeah, yeah, You were yeah. fighting back yeah. here, looking for the right word. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then he, you can see just, yeah. uh, again, I was a few rows back and I thought I'd be, so I was trying to see how, <laughs> no, I had great, I'm joking, I had great seats. Thank you, Joe. Uh, you don't want to make him cry because it's all ugly, no tears. <laughs> you start making him cry. And then just as he gets to the height of it, mm. you go, there it is. Yeah. We didn't want to see it. Like oh the ugly God. cry. And then yeah, that yeah. got another yeah. big pop yeah and that was uh another just great um yeah. showman moment yeah um but the guys being out there for you like that was was uh it was great. overwhelming to say the least because yeah, yeah. you just go man how rare it is to have a group and so many things could happen to where it stops yeah you know whether someone isn't with us anymore sure. decides just to check out relationships yeah. Yeah. Life. life we'll be back <laughs> I wish I'd pulled out a box of life cereal at that point. We just started each chow down. Did Barrett uh, know that you were going to sing a song to yeah. her? Or for well, her? again, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's like, how do you top the new kids? I mean, how do you top that? We leave and who comes out? But, you know, my son, Griffin, and sits down at the grand piano in Carnegie Hall and starts playing. He's, he's an amazing performer and artist and, and he's legit. started playing stay the same which is a special song for me and you know i i sing this song with my my son you know another fantastic moment and by the way comparable to the 
Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Sr. playing yeah. baseball on the same team. I didn't want to say it. LeBron wants to play with his kid. I didn't want to say it. Um, yeah. Super Bowl Kelsey brothers getting to play against you. There's a rarity in life. Yeah. Like if you yeah. were to ask me how many father son, yeah, you know, have happened like that on yeah. that stage. Yeah. I don't know, maybe 10. No, it was great, you know, and I, I respect him so much as an artist, you know, he's his own artist. So I, the only thing I can tell him is, hey, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. But I could never tell him how to play something or what music to create. He's just his own artist and he's earned it and he's, he's the man. I knew I wanted to dedicate something to my wife for a zillion reasons. You know, I was thinking of a song and, and you know, again, the classics, the best, you know, Paul McCartney. But his song, Maybe I'm Amazed, I don't play the piano that much. I'm trying to, you know... Put it in the arsenal. Get, put it in the arsenal. A few songs for me to sit down at the piano. I wrote one song, Five Brothers and a Million Sisters, which is sort of like a, a bit of an anthem for our, you know, blockheads. I play that on piano, but it's very simple. Maybe I'm Amazed has that same rhythm. Dum, dum. Gotcha. So I knew that would kind of work. And sure enough, I sit down and I'm learning it. And he's a genius, apparently. And um, <laughs> I learned, I play in the song for months. So the, I want the irony, of course, the joke is that my wife is sick of hearing this song, you know, because I'm messing up and yeah. doing it over and then singing it. And it's high. That song is high. Um, I did have a moment at Soundcheck where I wouldn't call it choking because it was Soundcheck. So if you're going to have a, a brain freeze, let it be at Soundcheck. But I like sat down and I was like, "Ooh, it was a, that was an immense moment. The grand piano at Carnegie Hall. I'm not. Piano player is, is sort of, I'm adding that to my repertoire. Yeah. It's not my bread and butter. And here I am, and like I sat there, and I'm like. <laughs> and it wasn't really coming, and it wasn't like, and even Nadia like looked, and she was like, oh, God. <laughs> we kind of laughing about Should it. Should we cancel the show? But we kind of plotted through it once. And that was fine. And then there's like pianos everywhere. And the, you know, yeah. and by the way, the dressing room is so cool. It's the maestro's dressing room. You know what I mean? So there's a piano in the dressing room. That's awesome. There's a grand piano in the other dressing room. So I kept practicing. And um, when the moment came, I was good. I was good. And, you know, I listened back and I'm like, oh, it sounded good. Yeah. It was legit. The piano was facing this way. I wanted my wife to be up in that box. I always envisioned her there. And the boxes up there at Carnegie, it's so cool. Famous boxes where people sit, where Lincoln sat, where the old guys from the Muppets sat, yeah. and where people sit at Carnegie yeah, where, to get serenaded. That's right. That's and right. you had a straight on. Boom. And uh, she was there, and e -Man, my buddy E-Man, I kept saying, you got to play the solo, the guitar solo. And he comes back out and plays the guitar solo. on. And um, by the way, where they're pointing at the, so the stage manager is like, yeah. let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. Like my manager, Jared Paul is like about to like pull out his hair because he's like, <laughs> oh man. And we're like down to the wire. So we got one more song left and it's Five Brothers and a Million Sisters. So I call the audible. I said, what time is it? They were like, it's- 56 maybe. And yes, 59. it's 10.56. And we literally call the audible. We do one verse. We do the big ending, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. We do the whole thing. We literally thank you. We run off stage. It's not a bit. We don't even have time after three hours <laughs> yeah. to go. Thank you. And, you know, <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Curtain call, bow. Roses, it was like, we gotta go because yeah. we just rocked this place for three hours yeah. straight. It was kind of gangster. It was gangster. That's we what I just said, bro. It off. That's what I said. I said that was so. That was the perfect ending because again, yeah. up until the last. <laughs> Second, we were in the moment. I wouldn't change one freaking bit of it, man. Yes! Yes! Yes, Sean! Sean Yes, everybody! We gotta go! We gotta go! We gotta go!
it's magical to have that be the way you close it out because it just kind of leaves everyone in this like like what do I do now? Yeah. Like I just it was great. Hey man, you got this amount great. of time to to, to do what you want. And I don't know about the overtime. I've I've heard I've <laughs> I don't think it was a hundred grand, but literally one more minute, and it was. Overtime for the whole building. Yeah, and I gave the guy my debit card. So I mean, you know, again, I wish there was a tour bus waiting for us so we could do fifty more. But for real? Well, yeah, because you you're just so jazzed up. You're on a wave, you know. But you want to do it again? Had to come down. Yeah. And you were so nice to spend the next day with me, just walking the streets of New York, and you walk by, and what? Poster's gone. That's how. That's it. Yeah, keep on moving. And so he right size it, you know. So then, yeah, the after party was a great way to kind of. You couldn't have just gone back to your room. No. And even if you were dead tired, which I'm sure you were, you want to keep it going because we want to ride the high. It's not yeah. just you. Yeah. You know, we went to this. It was uh, fun. Yeah. It was like five blocks down. Yeah. You know, it was just good to see friends and family and the fans just dancing and having fun. And it's great to have such a great icebreaker. Everyone's got your night as a common bond because everyone's yeah. just jazzed about. They were. What's they happening. were jazzed about the night. And it's, yeah, it was, it was fun. You guys have a good time. So many of Joe's shows. Tonight was the best thing ever, ever, ever seen. And I, I literally went upstairs to the dressing room, crying my eyes out. Just how proud I was. I just want to say, Joe, I love you so much. You make me proud every day since we met. so proud of this dude that the world is finally seeing. You are a legend, so congratulations. That's the kind of inspiration we're talking about. Let's keep inspiring each other. A year from now, I guess we could do five years from now, you know, because you're going to get a lot of these conversations now, which is why I wanted a longer, lengthier one that really, you know, delved in, delved in, dove into it. Dive, delved. Delved. Delve always sounds Dol like not a word. Dolvin. Dolved into it. I'll be honest. Dolvin. Dolved in, that didn't sound too far. What's a synonym for delved? Dolvin? For delved. I if think you taken said the, Taking the time. Before we got on that tangent, you did say a word that worked as well. Okay, great. I think you're going to look back on this and go, I'm glad I took the time to do that because in looking back, bing, bing, put the little looking backs right here. I don't think that's the one. But yeah, I don't is. think that's the one either. <laughs> I, I think it's did. about last night, yeah. but we'll yeah, see. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll see. keep playing with it. You did it. Carnegie Hall. Did Carnegie Hall. You did it. You done it. You lived it. You know, when you do something that big, what's next? Like, that can be a big question. Like, I know what I'm going to do, you know, from turning 50. I, I, I let the world know that I'm going to do 50 solo shows. And that kind of keeps me busy and keeps me engaged and keeps me challenged and keeps me motivated. When you play Carnegie Hall and it's everything you ever could have imagined and dreamed of, you say, where can I do that again? Mm. Because there's part of me that feels like I'm kind of done. Everything after that is just because I like it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. it. And it goes back to a stage is a stage is a stage. So it's at once very inspiring and motivating, but you also have to completely put it on the shelf and leave it there. <laughs> You're supposed to dive on that grenade. <laughs> no, man. I let it blow the set up. Okay. Yeah, that was such a good ending to the show. Okay. I don't want anyone to see it. Okay. Um, <laughs> put it on the shelf and leave it there. Joe, I love you. I love you. Brother, Thank you. Thanks for having me. And we'll do it again soon. You look great, by the way. Thanks, bro. I'm feeling okay in this sweater. Not sure how my posture oh. was. I think I was probably it's bunched good. up. A I mean, the stripes are going this way, but it's making you skinny. I love that. Oof. Wow. You sound like my mom. All right. <laughs> I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm like, you got it. Okay, I'll stop. Um, <laughs> Couple of things. <laughs> this too shall pass. 
This too shall pass. Go better and different. And uh, attitude is everything. I hate to tell you. <laughs> Took me a long time to figure that one out. You're going to get through it if you get, you, you try to get through it.